Good afternoon, everybody on Educated Economist here. You know what I love best about this channel is all the comments. You know that. I learned so much more from the comments than I ever learned doing research and trying to figure out what it is that's going on in this economy. Now, sometimes I will put out an idea or something that I feel is taking place inside of the economy. People will call me crazy for it, and then somebody will comment a particular economic theory or something that is going on in which that describes exactly what it is that I've been thinking about or talking about, and it really surprises me that nobody else had mentioned it or came up with that idea so one of them was when i was talking about the breakdown of the supply chain i was talking about lumber and how there was this huge shortage of lumber that was taking place but then at the same time all of a sudden you have a bunch of mills starting to go into production and you next thing you see is this production is now overwhelming the supply and the prices drop significantly well when you see that happening hey what's happening man yeah, I'm making a video here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All righty, brother. So anyway, <laughs> um, so where was I at? Okay, so when I started talking about this particular thing, um, this this experience that I was having within the, within the lumber industry and the oversupply, then undersupply, oversupply, somebody had mentioned in the, in the comments section the bullwhip effect. Well, I had never heard of the bullwhip effect before. And so I had to go and research that, figure out what it was, and then realize, wow, that's exactly what it is that I have been talking about. I didn't know that somebody had already had this economic theory on it, and there was like, this is something that takes place, like this bullwhip effect. And everybody like all of a sudden talking about it after, after the supply chain started breaking down. So thank you very much to all the viewers who comment on this channel. You are the gold of this channel. Like, if there was anything that has value of this channel, it is definitely the comment section, and it is all the people who do who do the commenting here. I cannot thank you enough. Yesterday's video, I was talking about how the rising of interest rates will cause the price inflation to increase. People called me nuts for that. They said, you are absolutely crazy. You really don't know what you're talking about. And you've gone off your off the deep end. You're off your rocker, right? This is what they were trying to tell me. And it's just because of the things that I've been experiencing. You know, I mean, I'm boots on the ground kind of guy. I work a retail job. I study macroeconomics, but I haven't been taught. I'm just learning and I'm learning just like a lot of you are out there. Well, when you start putting everybody's heads together and you start talking about some of these things, well, you start realizing that there is a lot more to, to know and understand. And even things that had been theorized in the past simply just don't get talked about. And one of those things is Gibson's paradox. Very interesting, very informative um, information when you go and you start researching Gibson's paradox. Now, I have to think, I believe his name was Philip. I want to go look for the comment earlier before I started the video, but I'm a little short on time, so I have to go, you know, I have to finish up my lunch and go back to work. But Philip mentioned just two words, Gibson's Paradox, when I put out that video yesterday. And so I had never heard of Gibson's Paradox. I mean, I think I might have heard of it, but I never, like, did any research or understood what it was. And I didn't think about... I didn't know to think about Gibson's paradox as one of the issues that might be taking place. I'm going to leave down in the description an excellent, excellent um, report or discussion or whatever it is coming from Gold Money. And the title of this, Gibson's paradox has defeated all the mainstream economists who have tried to resolve it, including Irving Fisher, John, May John Maynard Keynes, and Milton Friedman. They could not explain Gibson's paradox. Now, to put it simply, let me go to the very end of this because they have a very quick, easy description of it. It says, uh, let's see here. The explanation of Gibson's paradox is at its simplest. Okay. If the prices of goods are expected to rise, then their time preference are bound to increase. And if they are expected to fall, their time preference are bound to fall. That is why interest rates correlate with price level so pretty much if you read this you will find that throughout history there has been many times in which interest rates have either risen along with prices or interest rates were low and prices had fallen now this is something that is very like 
pretty much against everybody's like intuition on what would happen. You know, if you look at like the low interest rates when it comes to mortgages, causing the house prices to go up, it's just such an easy thing to try and wrap your head around. It's something that I have believed for a very long time. But I started feeling very much different about things when I was like, how come it is that the quantitative easing one, two, three, and four failed to produce the price inflation that everybody was expecting, including the Federal Reserve. I mean, the Federal Reserve even said it, that they were only able to, to achieve their 2% target just a few times over the last 10 years. Now, I'm gonna leave links down in the description for this. I think we all should go down, read the, read the gold money report on this, and then let's talk about this because it is very interesting. Listen to this paragraph here, it says, the correlation should be between changes in level of price inflation and interest rates. Empirical evidence shows there is no such correlation. The response from neo-Keynesian and monetar monet monetarist, sorry guys, monetar school <laughs> has been to ignore Gibson's paradox instead of resolving it. So much so that, e that few economics professors are aware of its existence today. So this is very interesting stuff to think about as most people would really take on the idea of that, you know, interest rates rising would cause a slowdown in consumer demand. And if you have a slowdown in consumer demand, then prices are gonna need to fall in order to pretty much meet the capabilities of the consumer. I mean, that's pretty much what the idea has always been out there. So even in, um, let me see if I can find the other one here. Oh, here we go. Gibson's paradox is based on an economic observation made by British economist Alfred, Herb Alfred Herbert Gibson regarding the positive correlation between interest rates and wholesale price levels. John Maynard Keynes later called this relationship a paradox because he claimed that it could not be explained by existing economic theories. Very, very interesting stuff. So I don't know how deep into the paradox we really are as far as Gibson's theory. And it's not even really a theory. It was more of an observation. I mean, most of us have the theory of rising interest rates will slow the economy down and lowering interest rates would speed the economy up. And with that idea would be the price level changes, the inflation that comes with it. But according to this paradox, that's just simply not the case. Um, yeah, anyway, I don't know what else to say about it other than go read the read the stuff. I'm gonna read it again because it's new to me. And I think a lot of you who are into researching what it is that's taken place inside of the economy, especially when it comes to macroeconomics, would probably find this particular, um, you know, this, this Gibson's paradox as a very intriguing, a, intriguing concept. So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm, I'm still learning a lot about it and I hope to hear a lot from you guys as far as what your theories are after reading the, uh, reading the paper that, that I leave a link down in the description for. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. Uneducated economist. You guys let me know.